So if, if we talk about this, it sounds like here's some patterns. Um, I believe it's got to be free, and I believe it has to be accessible, and it has to be accessible 24-7. And we have to be freed up to redefine those boundaries on a daily basis because the technology, the, the web 2.0 apps change, the tech changes, the access changes, the network changes, the conversation changes. And I think if we strip it down to some really basic principles of 21st century learning, if it costs money, there's probably a free version also. Two, it has to be accessible all the time. So, yeah, isn't that right, daughter? Right? You know it. That's right, free and available, right? So I think cloud, cloud technology is much more exciting than an anchored software solution that's proprietary and behind closed doors. Now, that brings, you know, equal issues. You know, if it's in the cloud and you only want your team to have access, you have to be thoughtful of what that means. But, you know, I don't want my kids to have access to a technology that only I can have access to. I want folks like you, if they're going to support my kids, I want them to have access to it. But so I, I think... I think free and in the cloud is really vital. And I think the space is not nearly as important as those two elements. The space becomes reflective. So what I really get excited about in terms of space, and we're going to flip to that soon, is what good kindergarten teachers have been doing forever. Activity zones, uh, scalable space, so one kid, one teacher, to 20 kids, one teacher, to three kids over in one place and five kids over here and a teacher working with another group. And it has to be mobile and adjustable, and in March it's different than it was in February, or di certainly different than September and August. So I think if we can borrow from really good activity zones and really comfortable third spaces and that idea of where do we, uh, where do we, uh, what spaces do we feel comfortable in as professionals when we're out in the world and we're in a hotel or a, somebody's living room or a, a, a public library or a, an airport or whatever it is, or, or even on the hallways of your university setting right now, I think if we can sort of look at those and go, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that, then we can come up with really good solutions that can adjust based on, you know, Gabe, what your teachers need on a Wednesday or what your district will allow versus what somebody else is going to say when, hey, we don't have perfect spaces and this is all we have. And so I don't know if you're of like mind, but I think if we can sort of agree, at least temporarily, that those are practical. And the faster that we can get into mobile technologies, hold on, i got to show you what my daughter's doing right now. My three-year-old daughter is standing on a table playing with a light bulb. So I'm going to pull her down, but I want you to know that's, that's what our learners of the future do. They don't need it, they just go. So I just learned to walk this month, so this is really terrifying for me. So I'm going to move her chair so she can't get near the chair at the table better. And then I'm probably going to have to get rid of that light bulb in the next 24 hour call. Hey, Christian, is this, is this a case where uh, Berkeley is teaching us about activity zones and scalable? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Just, it seems that uh, Berkeley is stepping in to teach us a little bit here about activity zones and uh, being mobile and being agile. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking. I, I was asked, as, um, I'm here in Columbus, Ohio, and I was just asked. I spoke in, at the University of Akron about two weeks ago talking with all early education, and they were interested in, in this idea of an e-book nook, meaning can digital, like the Kindle and the, the iPad and e-readers, does that have influence on how we design classroom spaces for young learners? So, you know, Head Start programs all the way through sixth grade. And, and, and then I'm going to go speak uh, at, at a district, uh, a literacy program. They want to talk about what you guys, it's all literacy teachers, but they want to talk about school design, which is really fascinating to me. And, and we're talking about this, and, 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 and we're talking about literacy, what it means to be literate in, in the 21st century, which means if you don't know the answer, how do you find, how do you discern, how do you shrink the world of information down to a data set that's useful? And then how do you mash it up? How do you tear it apart? How do you rebuild it into a novel solution? And, and then craft an audience. I mean, that to me is what 21st century literacy is. Is how do you find, how do you evaluate, how do you tear apart, rebuild, and then craft an audience so they care about your version of that content? And then how can you do that over and over? How can you unlearn, unlearn, unlearn that model constantly? Um, and so, yeah, my daughter, I look around at how she plays, and this is true of any kid, and this, is, and, and this is why I think kindergarten teachers are brilliant wayfinders for us, because they've always known every kid learns differently, 
They've always known every kid has to be differently engaged at different times. And they've always known that it's never 30 to 1 every minute. They've always known it's a multiplicity of relationships. And it better be fun. It better be engaging. It better be new. And it better be... And this isn't MTV. And this isn't, you know, kids don't have attention spans. This is young learners need constant influx of new and materials and mediums and manipulatables. And then all of a sudden, I was talking with this woman yesterday as we were finalizing this presentation for October, I said that the scary part is the moment first grade rolls around, we slam on the brakes, we get rid of every uh, instinct and knowledge about learning we've ever had, and we suddenly put kids into rows and teachers become experts, and all of a sudden it's a completely different, and now 21st century is saying, maybe you need to rethink all of that, because now we have a major disconnect between school and everything. And every, so I think my daughter is doing what kids have always done and what they did long before 200 years ago when formal schooling took over. And that's his, uh, you know, we tear things apart to find out what they do. And then we put them together in really unexpected ways. And we hope that whatever paste or glue was used can be undone by a parent. Um, you know, the, the stickiness isn't permanent. So, yeah, I agree. I think she's showing us, uh, I think young kids are, are the metaphor for the future of learning. But they've always done it. We just need to unthink school.